Olympic ski jumpers soar their way into the history books, how to pack for a backcountry adventure, and spending Valentine's Day all on your own. Stay with us, that's on this episode of Go See the Sky. Welcome to Go See the Sky. I'm your host, Heather Butts, in Whistler's Town Plaza. The excitement of the Winter Olympics can be felt throughout the entire Whistler Village. The spirit of the 2010 Games has been reignited while our athletes compete in Sochi. It's an exciting time and it can also be historic. Some events ran for the first time in Olympic competition during the 2014 Games, and that includes our female ski jumpers. Taylor Henrich and Atsuko Tanaka soared their their way into the history books without even making the podium. We caught up with them at Whistler Olympic Park before they left for Sochi. Have a look. The airtime is the best time in the world. You get to go against gravity and you know fly through the air. No one gets to experience that. Soaring high above the Callahan Valley, time is at a standstill. Watching, waiting to make the perfect landing. It's a crazy sport. You know, you get airtime, a lot of flying, which is really cool. And yeah, I just love it. Sliding onto the bar, Atsuko Tanaka looks out. Like an eagle perched on a treetop, she surveys her domain. Giving the jump a final inspection, she stands. Skis in the track, she begins to pick up speed. Racing down the ramp at roughly 90 kilometers an hour, it's only a split second before she lifts off and takes flight. You need to be relaxed in order to actually control your body in the air and have that good balance so that you're not like tilting on either side. Both the ladies and men's teams spent a few final days at Whistler Olympic Park just before heading to the Olympics. At the age of 22, Tanaka is proudly representing Canada in Sochi, but she isn't the lone female. Her teammate and fellow Calgarian Taylor Henrich is proud to say she's an Olympian too. I'm 18 years old. I've been ski jumping since I was eight, so this makes it my 10th year. Been heading to the Olympics in my 10th year. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Pretty cool indeed. After all, it's not only their Olympic debut, but the sports. 2014 marks the first year for women ski jumping during the Olympic Games. It's definitely something really exciting. You know, it's a first time for everybody in the sport. I think it's a special moment for all of us, and I think we should all just be proud of ourselves that we made it this far. Working alongside their experienced coach, he too was excited to see women ski jumping take flight nearly 90 years after men first jumped in Olympic competition. It brings a whole another level of excitement and, you know, it uh, makes you think why you do this. So it, it, it'll, be, it'll be fun and special for everyone. The fight to include women's ski jumping prior to the Vancouver Olympics went as far as the Supreme Court, only to have it rule against the athletes' appeal in 2009, but these jumpers never gave up. As a community of women's ski jumping, I feel like we just all got stronger and stronger as the years went by. There's a lot more further jumps and a lot more competitiveness within our results, and you know, it shows so I think that's part of the reason why we got in and you know now we get to prove to the world that we belong there. No matter the result during their Olympic debut, these women have already made history. Their goal now is to simply let go and just fly. Atsuko Tanaka placed 12th and Taylor Henrich placed 13th respectively. Congratulations to both ladies for representing our country at the Olympics and in the history books. Now music can often play a key role for athletes during training or to pump them up before the big event. Maybe even the sounds of O oh Village. The Canadian band released their first album in 2012 and they're working on a new one. Our Paul McClellan met up with them for a private performance. Home. I need a pair and eyes, and I need a set of eyes. 
I think it's true. The guys from O Village invited us to Emmanuel Mennonite Church for a song and a chat. It's a bit of a second home for the Abbotsford Band, who attend and perform here regularly. Spirituality is a huge aspect of our band. I mean, obviously, us four uh, together as a unit feel very strongly about it and how it impacts our lives. And, um, you know, when you write, you write about things that are important to you and things that are going on in your life and for some people that's not spirituality at all uh, but I mean for me when I write lyrics that's a thing that's constantly going on in my mind. The way we write music together um, is always a, a spiritual event for us. Um, it's, it's very important uh, throughout everything we do. Far Side of the Sea was the debut record in 2012. What can you tell us about that one? Yeah, uh, for Steve and I, Far Side of the Sea was recorded just after graduating, just to, you know, go, kind of going into the summer, and it was something we were really excited about. The producer we had was amazing, and uh, you know, we were super pumped to get an album out, just of kind of what we had to give to people, the songs that we had over our kind of our time in high school, where we were kind of easy going with music. Steve and Dave and Scott had been in a band uh, together prior to that. I had been in a band with Scott, and so it was kind of coming together, kind of learning from our past band experiences and musical backgrounds and kind of creating something together for the first time. Those that made it so new, and so it covered some of our old songs, some of the songs um, from the band that the rest of the guys used to be in, uh, and then some of the ones that we had started writing together. And you guys are working on something new at the moment, I understand? Yes, uh, we are currently working on an EP, which we're going to be recording in uh, February uh, in Vancouver, which is really exciting for us because, you know, since graduating, we've had so much more time to really apply ourselves to the music and really kind of create that sound that we uh, want to get. And we've started, uh, yeah, the, the pre-production. Uh, nailing out what we want the songs to sound like, kind of working with the transitions. We really want to come in like super prepared uh, to make something that is both really us and stays true to what we are as a band, but also is radically different from what Far Side of the Sea was. So we kind of push ourselves into, into new areas. You guys released a video for Headlights. Tell me a little bit about what's going on in that and how did you put it all together? Yeah, Headlights, we knew we wanted to have a music video from a song off our album and a good buddy of ours uh, asked us if we, we wanted to do a music video with him and so we said, yeah, sure. And so uh, we talked to him and you know, we, he put it together for us and we kind of collaborated on an idea and we actually filmed it uh, here uh, in the gymnasium at this place. The new EP is expected to drop in the spring along with plenty of local shows and potentially some new music videos. Check out ovillage.com for info. Well, if you recognize their music, but maybe not the name, they were once known as Ivory Coast before changing their name to O Village. Well, if you feel like you may have missed one of our episodes or our full show, don't worry, everything's available for you online in HD. Just visit youtube.com slash Whistler Shaw. Go see the sky, we're your local voice. Coming up. Weather is unpredictable in the mountains and you need to be prepared for pretty much anything in the, in the winter. Preparing for a backcountry adventure and what to do if things go wrong. The following are proud supporters of community programming on Shaw TV. Hairstyling and color services for Heather Butts are provided by The Loft Salon. TheLoftSalon.com Hi folks, Don Taylor here. Need a lift? 
At Levin Machinery, they sell, rent, lease, and service machinery, big and small, for your material handling needs. And they offer certified training. Stack it, reach it, lift it, lev it. One in three Canadians know someone with Alzheimer's disease or another dementia. I'm one of those Canadians. September is World Alzheimer's Month, and the Alzheimer's Society of BC wants you to get involved. Use your creative ideas, your outstanding talents, and your sizzling passions. We make it easy to create a unique fundraising event or join in someone else's. Do anything for Alzheimer's and help support people with dementia, their caregivers, and research for a cure. Let's get started at anythingforalzheimers.ca today. Welcome back to Go Sea to Sky. I'm your host, Heather Butts in Whistler's Town Plaza. There is snow on the ground and skiers and boarders are welcoming back winter with open arms. The excitement may have you heading for the backcountry. And we've got some tips and tricks from the experts on what to do and how to pack just in case you have to spend the night. What I love about being in the backcountry is uh, just getting out into the mountains and having some peace and quiet and uh, enjoying it with, uh, with other people. It's, uh, it's a great place to, uh, to connect with the mountains, to be challenged and, and have a good time. Well, weather is unpredictable in the mountains and you need to be prepared for pretty much anything in the, in the winter. Preparation starts at home, so you want to make sure that you have Check the weather, check the avalanche conditions. Know your party, so know what their abilities are. Don't, don't go and do a day that's really quite, you know, way too difficult for someone in the group or is way out of their risk tolerance. You should really have a look at a map and any other information that you can get uh, to tell you the length of the day and the difficulty of the day is also the, the hazards for the day. Once you have a plan in place, uh, leave that information with somebody who knows what to do with it uh, if you don't come back. Uh, there's obviously a variety of things that could happen. Uh, there's sort of the typical ones that happen for folks. Probably the first one is getting lost. Um, the other one would be you know, potentially getting injured um, or having equipment failure. You know, what I'd suggest is that you probably don't travel too far from the trail that you are, you're on in case somebody has to come and look for you. If you are in a situation where you do need to spend the night, there's a variety of options. So this looks pretty good. It's, it's open, got a few trees to block some of the wind, and I'll have lots of snow to work with. The key in here is that really there's not a lot of snow on the ground, so if I poke, that's the ground there, so I can't, I can't make a snow cave where there's such a huge depth where I just dig into the snow. What I need to do is build my own pile of snow um, and then compact it so that I have something to dig into. Take your thinnest pair of gloves and your shell jacket and put that on. Take your insulated layers off and dig. When you're digging one of these things, you want to make sure they're structurally sound. So you want to build the, the roof, the ceiling of it to be dome shaped. So right now I'm on the snow. I'm just going to melt it and get wet and get cold. If I had that emergency tarp, that'd be the perfect thing to lay down on the ground to make sure I wasn't going to get wet. If you want to learn about backcountry winter survival, there's a variety of options for you. Um, you know, these days, you know, looking on the internet, making sure you find out all the resources that are available to you, pick up some books and take a few courses, um, a few places that you can look. Um, you know, Yamniska Mountain Adventures has some basic courses, uh, the University of Calgary, um, Alpine Club of Canada. All right, so another option for a, for a shelter here, whoa, you can see the snow is deep here as well, um, is to do something a little quicker. So if you think it's just gonna be a short period of time before help's gonna arrive, um, this could be a good option. Um, so that would be using our emergency tarp, which doesn't provide any insulation, but it will stop the, uh, the wind from getting at you, and as well as if you're sitting on it, you won't get wet. So a good place to do something like this, bit of shelter from the trees, so you're not gonna get a lot of wind coming through. I can build myself just a little seat over here and then um, I basically cover myself with a tarp. 
Now, food is, of course, something you'll need for the backcountry adventure, and our next episode might help you out with that. Everything you eat either improves your health or degrades it, and it also has an impact on our planet. And that's what you learn when you're cooking with Preet. Our Johanna Ward rolled up her sleeves for this one. Have a look. You know, when we think about healthy food, so often in our minds we're thinking about, you know, green sludge smoothies. Um, I'm a health freak. You'll never catch me drinking one of those things. I thought you said no green sludge. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> Look, it's, it's very smooth. That's true. You start your day with one of these every day? Yeah, every day. It's got to look good, it's got to taste good, it's got to make you feel good. It has to have all the elements that we look for in food. Otherwise, it's not sustainable. Cucumber, celery, parsley, cilantro, lemon, lime, ginger, kale, chard, wheatgrass, sprouts. I feel like Popeye right now. <laughs> <laughs> Organic Lives founder Preet Marwaha believes that wellness starts from within. That, of course, includes what you put inside you. Eat whole food. It should come out of the ground. He also believes in keeping recipes simple, like making a smoothie with just hemp milk and bananas. Oh, it's yummy. I can't believe there's only two ingredients in here. And two amazing ingredients. This took what, how long? A minute and a half. That includes making the hemp milk. That's another piece of Preet's philosophy. Education, it's key. The idea of making milk seems really challenging. Right, because we see it in a box mm -hmm. on a store. We're, we never are really sure how it got there or how it was put in the box. This is, it's easy. Preet whipped it up in a blender. <laughs> That's just the start of what he can make and teach others to make. One of his passions, sharing his love of food with his hands-on cooking classes, Cooking with Treat. They do all the prep and assembly and putting together and, and mixing and combining. I'm there to guide them, to give them the knowledge and sort of build the foundations. The classes are chocked full of nutritious ingredients and health foodie factoids. So coconut is amazing. The, the fatty acids in coconut are so good for your health, so good for your skin. These are really unique dates. They're from the Hunza Valley, North Pakistan. Oh, it's like candy. Yeah. Really Nature's good. candy? Nature's candy. This chocolate pie pudding also contains avocado, pure rock cacao, maple syrup, plus a squeeze of lemon, fresh almond butter, and Preet's favorite two ingredients. Biodynamic cinnamon and vanilla, unlike you've ever smelled or tasted before. Well, wow, that's really rich. Yeah. It in is. a wonderful way, but it, good for me. It good for you. It's still a dessert, mm -hmm. so you don't want to be having this for breakfast or anything like that. Okay. It's good to have once really? in a while when you want to make a... <laughs> I can't have this for breakfast? <laughs> he may be a stickler about breakfast, but his message is still easy to be sweet on. If we can simplify our food the way we eat it, the way we understand it, your life becomes simpler. It becomes purer and healthier and increased consciousness. All of those things start to happen. You can check his website for his next four-part cooking series, and there's also the very valuable section, Ask Preet. Now that website, as well as other valuable resources, are available on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash go see the sky. Later in the show, it's good to be single. You can be out there having a ball. <laughs> Who says you need a date? You can have fun all on your own. The following are proud supporters of community programming on Shaw TV. Heather Butt's wardrobe is fitted by Peak Performance. Peakperformance.com Whether you're pursuing a television career or looking for a new leisure activity, we invite you to join the Shaw TV Volunteer Program. You can gain valuable hands-on experience and acquire skills ranging from camera to floor directing. We're looking for high school or college students or adults who are eager to learn. Shaw TV is currently accepting volunteer applications. Contact us today. We're there to bring it home. Shaw TV, your local voice. Retirement Concepts Weather Report on Shaw TV takes you from around the world to across the country to your own backyard. Retirement Concepts Weather Report on Shaw TV gives you the inside information on the outside world daily on Shaw TV.
Welcome back to Go See the Sky. I'm your host, Heather Butts in Whistler Village. Well, if you're looking for that perfect vintage outfit or maybe designer labels at not so designer prices, you're going to want to pay attention to this next story. In this week's episode of West Coast Style, our Aaron Shaw finds a hidden gem that will help you find that hidden treasure. Squeamish about used clothing, not a vintage vulture? Well, get on board because resale clothing is the newest way to buy high fashion in Vancouver at a fraction of the cost. Mine and Yours is a curated resale store. We're different than consignment in that we pay cash up front for clothing. Traditional consignment has women bringing in their clothes and waiting until they sell to get their money. This shop is different. A customer comes in with her clothes, and for the clothing that we want to resell in our store, we set a resale price and we offer 30% of that resale price cash up front. Or we offer 50% of that resale price in store trading credit. Jigme and co-owner Courtney both lived in cities where the resale model is popular. They saw a hole in the Vancouver market and launched Mine and Yours. Yeah, this red is really great. Buyer Joanna makes sure their collection is in season and on trend, as it should be. They do their biggest buys from fashion bloggers and stylists. Well, we really love anything from Topshop to Prada. We love our high-end brands like Louis Vuitton, Chanel, but we definitely don't discriminate against H&M and other great brands like Marc Jacobs, Isabel Morant, 3.1 Philip Lim. That's what we really love to buy. Anything that we see that our friends would wear, that we would wear, we, we definitely will make an offer on. Well, we're looking through this magazine. I mean, there are some great looks. Could you recreate something like this? Definitely. We can create all the looks you see in the magazine for a fraction of the price. Mm, okay, well, let's see it. All right. This look was inspired by Naomi Watts. It has lots of different textures. Hers had the leather. In this, we have suede, leather, and sheer. Naomi's look was upwards of $5,000. This one's $250. This is a great Vancouver casual look, inspired by one of our favorites, Olivia Palermo. We have our Chanel loafers here, going for about $4.50, mixed with a $20 Club Monaco top. So this look was inspired by Miranda Kerr, and it's definitely a mix of textures. We have leather, studs, tweed, suede, and lace. We have the short shorts and the crop top, which are also pieces we're looking for for spring. I think the biggest thing is that people are intimidated by secondhand. We want to show that secondhand can be cool and current and on trend. This is different than thrift, it's different than consignment, it's different than vintage. It's, it's cool. <laughs> Not to mention a very affordable way to dress. I'm Erin Shaw for West Coast Style. Well, those are some beautiful vintage outfits, perfect for a day at work or maybe a night out on the town. Perhaps that special romantic evening. Yes, I said it, romance. Have you had enough of it already? Valentine's Day has come and gone, and perhaps you enjoyed it with a special someone, or maybe you enjoyed it on your own. Well, I decided to do something different this year. I wanted to see if those fun romantic activities are just as fun if you do them on your own. Have a look. Snow-covered mountains, decorated store windows, and couples romancing throughout the village. Love is in the air. Even the dogs are finding a fling. All right, enough with the romance already. From Christmas to Valentine's Day and all those weekends in between, it's all about finding that special someone to do that special thing with. And Whistler, it's the perfect place for it. But I got news for you. All those couple activities, well, they're just as fun when you do them on your own. If you're up for a high-flying adventure, no matter the season, strap on a harness and soar above the valley on a zip line. Who needs a romantic poem? The view will leave you speechless. Or, if you have a need for speed, put on a helmet and rock it down a bobsleigh track. Sure, you're sitting in a four-man sled, but the driver is provided and they'll find you friends to fill it. There's no need for roses here, the rush will take your breath away. Maybe you simply need a sweet treat. Who says you can't indulge on your own? Fresh breads, pastries, cakes, and crumbly scones. It's your pick at Pure Bread, and it doesn't come served in a prepackaged box. Hi, can I have some chocolate therapy, please? It's as fresh as it gets, and the experts agree. It tastes better when you enjoy it on your own. 
Why indulge in my own? Why would I share? Once you've had your adrenaline rush and filled your tummy with a treat, enjoy the village stroll. You might even meet a few other single supporters along the way. It's good to be single. You can be out there having a ball. <laughs> then, head indoors and pamper yourself. Hey, Jill. Hi, Heather. How are you? Good. You ready for your manicure today? I am. A manicure goes a long way. And don't shy from color. At Bee Beauty Spa, they'll help you be brave. Relax on your own while you gain a sparkle of confidence. No compliments needed. You know you look good. Nope, you don't need anybody to pamper you. You can pamper yourself. Take solace in the fact you're confident enough to enjoy time on your own. And no matter what you choose, do something you love. Whether it was on your own or you spent time with that special someone, I hope you enjoyed your Valentine's Day. Well, that does it for this episode of Go See to Sky. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Whether you're pursuing a television career or looking for a new leisure activity, we invite you to join the Shaw TV Volunteer Program. You can gain valuable hands-on experience and acquire skills ranging from camera to floor directing. We're looking for high school or college students or adults who are eager to learn. Shaw TV is currently accepting volunteer applications. Contact us today. We're there to bring it home. Shaw TV, your local voice. Was only 16. Richard Pierpoint was enslaved in Senegal and taken to America. All us men have sworn on this petition to fight. You're an old man. The British Army has militias and trained soldiers. I fought with the British during the American Revolution. Take your land and farm it. Leave the Americans to us. With respect, sir, I was born a free man, and I intend to die one. Your officers fight for land and money. I fight for my freedom. Richard Pierpoint was one of thousands of black loyalists who won their freedom in the American Revolution. 30 years later, at the age of 68, he petitioned for an all-black unit that would defend Upper Canada during the War of 1812. Vancouver's only local car sharing co-op. What's car sharing? It's thousands of people sharing the cost and access to hundreds of cars. Car sharing offers a reliable alternative to car ownership, fits your lifestyle, and saves you money. With 300 cars, trucks, and even cargo vans, Moto offers the lowest rates in Metro Vancouver. And booking a Moto is easy, online or by phone. Join, book, go. Learn more at moto.coop. It started out like any other spring morning. A morning that I'll never forget. I was an energetic and adventurous four-year-old. I'd been an electrician for 30 years. Without warning, our lives were changed forever. My dog's bark woke me up, and the house was filled with smoke. The pain was unbearable. It's physical and emotional scars. You don't grow up thinking you'll be a burn survivor. It just happens. But there is hope. We support burn survivors on their long journey to recovery. Give today. 
One in three Canadians know someone with Alzheimer's disease or another dementia. I'm one of those Canadians. September is World Alzheimer's Month and the Alzheimer's Society of BC wants you to get involved. Use your creative ideas, your outstanding talents and your sizzling passions. We make it easy to create a unique fundraising event or join in someone else's. Do anything for Alzheimer's and help support people with dementia, their caregivers and research for a cure. Let's get started at anythingforalzheimers.ca today.